I need to share something with you tonight. It's actually a vision that God gave me. Uh, not one that came to me today, not one that came to me yesterday or any time uh, here recently, but one that God gave me in 2008. Some of you, I've actually shared with you the dream that I had in 2008, earlier 2008, about the ice cream dream, which turned into an absolutely beautiful way of God explaining to me what is about to take place. If you remember at the end of that, <clears throat> there were some things that occurred right at the end. And what you're seeing right now is what occurred right at the end of that dream. One of those things where I've only shared it with a close friend, so forgive me if you uh, haven't seen that, but not something that God uh, allowed me to, to share uh, out to the full public. This one is. So I, I had that dream and I woke up <clears throat> from that dream. Now you gotta realize, uh, honestly, there were things occurring with me that I had never experienced before with God. So when I woke up from this dream, I immediately went into a vision. And I literally, in, in the shock, I, I reached over and pinched my skin. Like, am I really awake? But I wanted to sh tell you what exactly happened in that vision. I now know today why I had that. And it's extremely timely. So I went straight into this vision and I was standing in front of a congregation of people. And I looked out in front of the crowd and, and I have a crowd of mixed ages, adults, children, etc. And I said to that crowd, how many of you think that God can reach down and touch one of these little ones? Several people raised their hands. Um, I, I, I can't recall exactly how many it was. Now you got to realize, although I'm saying this happened in a vision, I was in, not in control of this. I was just seeing myself as if I was a part of the audience. And I said to the people, how many of you think that God can reach down and touch one of these little ones? And hands went up. Not everybody, though. And I looked to my son. I called his name. And I asked him to come up to the front of the, church, the congregation. I called his name once more to him and said, has God reached down and touched you today? And his response was yes. And I immediately turned to the congregation and I looked at the congregation and I said to them, those of you who know you are right with the Lord, today. You can talk to this young man and share things that God lays on your heart to share with this young man. Those of you who aren't and know you're not, the only thing I want you to tell this young man is to pray that God would reveal himself to you and reveal his will for you to you read the Bible and pray that God would expound or explain or give you the information, the enlightenment of the scriptures that he intends for you to have. And that's what I told him to say. I, I was not in control of that. That is how the vision went. Then I looked back out and I told that congregation now this young man needs some oak trees. Now, I didn't create the oak tree verbiage, but as soon as I said oak trees, I recalled the psalm that talks about the tree that's planted by the brook and his roots are deep. A spiritually mature person. We need these oak trees around this young man in order that he can grow in knowledge and grace and understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I said that to them, the vision was over. 
there was nothing else I could say. I immediately wrote it down. This was early 2008. I wrote it down. It's in a notebook here at the house now. I share that today. And what I share, I want to I want to make sure that you understand at, at a point in time in the New Testament, Paul stated, I think it's Galatians, Paul stated, I did not get this from man. I got it from God. I was taught this by the Holy Spirit. So Paul didn't go out and say, do you think this might be okay? Or, who? here's a good idea. Let's try to trick them up or something. Paul literally stated to the church, this didn't come to me by man. And I'm stating to you today, the thing that I'm sharing with you did not come from man. It came directly from God, the Father of Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit. Many of you may be looking at me today and you may be thinking, what are you talking about, man? I mean, that that's self-explanatory. Anybody with any knowledge of what how God deals with people, that's what they would say. There is a huge battle going on out there in the world, one of which is right on my front doorstep. Several that are very close by and throughout this world, it is unbelievable. I intended on this being short. I wanted to share something. I've posted this a couple times in text form, but I wanted to tell you a couple things uh, that have been on my mind and, and it comes up in my head constantly. In the New Testament, we're given instructions to testify for Jesus Christ. Go ye in, therefore into all nations. Many other references there. In the Old Testament, I want to talk to you about a scene, a setting that occurred. And I want to tell you about a group of people who had already received their rest. Yet, although they had already received their rest, they joined the battle in love and care and duty to God for those who had not received their rest. In the book of Joshua, you'll find that the children of Israel, they've come out of Egypt in the Exodus. They've uh, stayed out in the desert 40 years. Many have passed away. In fact, all of them passed away except for a couple. And now they're being prepared to go into the promised land. Before Moses died, Moses gave a commandment. And he told, um, the, I think it was the half tribe of Manassas. Uh, there was, like there was two tribes and one half of a tribe. That although you already have your rest, which is on this side of the Jordan River, you will go and fight with your brothers until they have rest. So at the time that the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, a portion of them had already received the promise. But they went across that Jordan River to battle against the enemies in order that their other countrymen, their other fellows, brothers and sisters, would have their rest. There is a huge battle going on right now and I'm gonna say it is not a flesh it is literally spiritual warfare going on out there right now as I speak people are saying things that you know in their right mind they wouldn't say people are doing things that you know the person that you once knew would not be saying that there is literally a battle for souls and the victims of this, I sent a message out today, a personal message. The victims is that young man who was just touched by Jesus Christ. And he can feel it. He knows something supernatural just happened to him. 
Perhaps when he tries to explain it, he can't even explain it other than just sit there and cry. And he walks or leaves that congregation or that setting and immediately begins to hear things that are contrary to God. You might think the world is the issue. And the world is an issue. But the battle is inside the body of Christ as well. I don't know how it happens. Other than Satan and his boys are reaping havoc in the hen house. I will be doing another video very shortly, another dream that I had uh, this week. Some counsel that I sought as a result of that. But you will see literally the enemy is at the doorstep. And people that should be the oak trees for these young Christians who need to nurse on some milk. Not those that Paul said you should be on meat now, yet you're still on milk. I'm talking about the ones that are on the milk. Forming their very first thoughts. They're actually being instructed by people that the Bible isn't necessary. That the Bible is not the Word of God. That the Bible and the writers of the Bible are liars. And not only are these people saying that, those standing against it are being persecuted, followed, spied on, and everything that could possibly be happening. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a spiritual battle right at the doorstep. And you may think, well, I have my rest. Brothers and sisters, if you're not an oak tree and you're not guiding and nourishing and teaching someone in the ways of Jesus Christ, in the ways of God the Father of Jesus Christ, through guidance of the Holy Spirit, you're on the wrong side of the Jordan River, man. You need to get into the battle and join the fight. You may think that there's everything is fine and rosy at that school that your kids are going to. You may think that the government has a great plan and things are going to work out okay. It's not. There's a battle going on. If you know Jesus Christ and you know that you know that you know you are right with him, get in the fight. The battle is here. Satan is out there ready to devour the little lamb.